Hi, I'm George Morgan, and today I have a special guest in my kitchen. Meet my very dear friend, Susan Fossey. Hello. Hello. Sue and I are the co-writers of my most recent book, Canvas and Cuisine. I'll give you a little shout out here. All of the gorgeous paintings in this book have been done by Sue. 65 of them. She told me she'd do 100, but she only got 65 of them done. We have been friends forever. And today, I'm gonna to share with you not only some of my cooking tricks, but Sue is gonna do a live painting for you to show you what the process is and how the artist gets her ingredients and comes to her dish in the kitchen. So Sue, what are we gonna to do today? Today, I use, do it the exact same way George does. I get all of my ingredients out and I lay them out like this. And this is a griddle just like George uses. I put it on 200 degrees and then I melt the wax like this. And in the book, I did a couple encaustic paintings, but most of them are either oil, acrylic, or pastel. So I decided to do this today because it's fun to do it. Um, so tell, that's again, the name of that is? It's in, called Encaustic, E-N-C-A-U-S-D-I-C. And what I'm doing is just, it doesn't really take much to melt it. And then, this is, this is what I love about Sue. This is like how she starts. This is, you're saying, oh my God, how's that gonna work out? And in the end, it and does. Then it just works out. So while Sue is working on her painting, we are also gonna deal with some tomatoes. We're gonna make some gazpacho soup with a secret ingredient. And I'll tell you about that later. But when I was traveling to Spain, we took a couple cooking classes, and one of the things I learned what to make was gazpacho, uh, which is a little different than what we have in the United States with another little secret ingredient. But the thing you want to do, these are plum tomatoes. These are on the vine. You can use either one. And what we're going to do is cut a little cross in the bottom of the tomato. We're going to go like this and like this. And I'll do it again, like this and like this. And then we're gonna plunge these tomatoes into boiling water. And that's gonna show us how easy it is to peel. So I have some boiling water right over here. And in we go. Just set the tomato in there and it's only gonna take a couple seconds. And I have one done that I, over here, after we get it out of the boiling water, we put it into ice water. And see how the skin just comes off? And that's what makes it really, really good. And especially if you're making a cold soup like this. And then it's easy to just cut. If you want, you can squeeze the seeds out. If it's really squeezy, really seedy, then you can squeeze it. <laughs> and then you can get these seeds out and then you put it right into the food processor. So gazpacho is basically, you're, there's no cooking going on here. We're just, we're taking some raw ingredients uh, and putting them all together. I'm using a food processor to make sure that they're nice and blended. But you want this soup to be kind of chunky. You want to taste the vegetables in it. And you can make it as spicy or unspicy as you like, but you want to taste the veggies going forward. So we're going to start with the tomatoes, and I'm just going to process them. Get them a little chunky. And then we're going to add a little bit of cucumber, and I like what they call English cucumbers because there's not as many seeds in them. I didn't know that. Right, so we're going to put some cucumber in there and a little bit of red onion. And again, we're not cooking the red onion, so you don't want to use more than you like. I like spicy, so I'm going to use a lot. And some red bell pepper. And we just slice this down. That's the beauty of the food process. You don't really have to do all that much work. It's going to do it for you. Which is kind of the beauty of doing in caustic because it is that blowtorch that makes it wonderful. Like if you look at this, this is really ugly. <laughs> I mean it really, and it's supposed to be ugly. And you can see I'm not really, I'm just trying to get the paint down. And this, 
you have to blow torch it every uh, layer that you do because this wax is now melting into that wax. So there's that and you can see it's interesting because the blue comes up through it. Now am I going to use that? Probably. Chopped veggies right into this large bowl. You're looking like, oh my gosh, I'm not so sure about that, but wait, because it's going to be okay. Um, and then I'm going to add our secret ingredient, and that is strawberries. Now, traditionally, gazpacho soup does not have strawberries in it, so this is a little bit different. But it's a really great spring, summer soup or that you can just have for lunch. I mean, a lot of times I love to do just cold soups for lunch on a hot day. And it was a hot day today. Sue and I were out there playing golf. We were. We were. Some of us killed it. Some of us didn't. But we were there. Some of us are most improved. Yeah. Some of us aren't. I'm going to take my strawberries, and you can see they're chunky. Chunky, and you can see the hot there. It's really good. And now I'm going to pour these back in. That's, I'm pouring that into my soup, which is great. And then we're gonna stir that, stir that together. And then I'm gonna remove some of it and keep emulsifying the rest of it. So while you're going, I will do that. What you can also do with wax, all of my wax paintings have at least 12, 15 layers. And so you can, you have to wait until it dries a little bit. Uh, but it doesn't take very long. And then you can peel down and, and it's the lines that you don't know, but your eyeball loves details. And I'm not really interested in these tomatoes looking like those tomatoes because no one's ever going to say, well, that tomato was rounder on one side. So I'm making those tomatoes. Uh -huh. So what I've done is taken about a third of the soup out of the bowl and put the other two thirds back in the food processor. And now I'm really going to pulse this down and get it more soup. More soup. More soup. And then to this I'm going to add some fresh garlic, a couple cloves, and some basil. The really good stuff. And another secret ingredient, not too secret, but white bread or crusty bread that has been soaked in a little bit of water. And that gives the soup some really good consistency. You kind of squeeze the water out. Yeah. yeah but, and then you just put the bread in there. And that makes it, it kind of starches up the soup a little bit instead of making it like eating just vegetables. Now, in, when you're in Spain, they do that, I mean, they put a whole bunch of it in there, and the gazpacho, instead of looking red, comes out almost white looking. Huh. We kept saying, no, 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 we want gazpacho. They say, it is gazpacho. And you can see it's a lot more consistent and soupy than the original one when I took it out. And this is where we add all the flavor. So see, I put some of the green in. See? Yeah, pretty good. Okay, I'm adding some red wine vinegar to the soup. I'm gonna pour back the chunky part to make this really have a lot of texture. This soup has a lot of texture. So stir that back in. And this is some vegetable stock. And we'll pour in some of that to make it really the soupy consistency that you want. And you can pour in as much as you want. Make it as, like, like you have layers, this has layers. This has so many, you know, layers. You can have it thicker, you can have it thinner, you gotta add more onion, less onion, salt and pepper. That's cool. It's cool. And it may be ready for a taste. I'll be back. I'm gonna get a ladle. No, not yet. You keep painting. Okay. So you can just keep putting these colors on. So this is green and so I'll just put yellow on, and you can see that where I'm dipping it in is a different color every time. And maybe we'll put this little dark blue. Is it, good? Is it done? Is it ready yes, for you? I'm going to add a little more vinegar. Two. What do you think about hot sauce? I 
like hot sauce. I think we need a little hot sauce. Okay, so I am going to add a little bit of a garnish on the top of this. You don't cut, uh, cook it at all, George? No, never. That's just a cold soup. I'll keep blowing it just to see what we're coming up with. See, that's kind of looking like tomatoes. You're having a great time? I have. Yes, I am hoping you're going to feed me. I'm going to feed you. Sure, Good job. It's delicious. Fresh, right? I mean, yeah. Mm. I love the strawberry. I know, isn't that a good idea? I know. Is that a good idea? You like what I do? I know. You can do it with anything. You can probably do it with blueberries or oranges or anything better. Oranges wouldn't be better. You keep going there. Now I'm going to make you a little sweet treat. I mean, because if you want it to look like a tomato, take a picture. We want it to look like a peony. You start with the avocados and they go into our blender. This really should have been a whole series on how we grind things up and torch things. Because <laughs> that's really what we're doing. Yeah. Um, and this is a great way to use up a leftover avocado. By now you guys know that I always have leftover things that are like falling apart and I always are trying to find some way to use it. So this is an excellent one. You might not want to tell people it's an avocado. And in it goes. It's real, look how thick it is. Yeah. Hey, but you can paint with this stuff. It. <laughs> I bet you I can. I bet you could. Don't give me any bad any ideas. My pantry will be great. Get the top off this thing. Okay, and then it goes the cream. And loud noise, here we go. Turn it on. And then it goes. <gasps> it does look good, doesn't it? Doesn't it kind of looks like pistachio ice cream? Yeah, yeah. Pretty really, really good. It's during the end, we're going to add some fresh strawberries. I should have made you paint strawberries and tomatoes because I have should. strawberry things going on here. But what I've done is just chop them up and then I mash them with a masher. Mm -hmm. Then I drain them through a strainer and then we'll put them in, in the last couple minutes of the ice cream. And if you do it this way, they won't get too icy. Sometimes when you freeze the fruit like that, it gets icy. But if you do it like this, so they just go in here like this. this delicious avocado cream. That's what it looks like. Let me see. It looks like ice cream. I love that. See with a little, it's gonna be good. You're gonna see. Who we'll believes it? Well then let's That's take a nice touch. touch. It was a good touch. All right, now, if you don't like it, just like turn your head and don't show anybody you don't like it, but it's actually pretty good. Look, people don't play it. See? That's wonderful. I told you. And we won't tell Tom what it is. Mm -hmm. Tom's a little picky, we won't. And you know what? We're not gonna tell Hubby what it is either, but they'll eat it. It doesn't taste like avocado. I know. So, it's kind of healthy. I Could you put nuts in it? Sure. You put whatever you want. I love nuts. I'll find some. I'm sure I have some somewhere. You keep painting. Okay. 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 Sue and me, best buddies. We hope you guys get your best buddy and surround yourself with love and create some paintings and create some good food and spend some good quality time together. So we'll see you next time. Thanks. Thank you for coming.